Hello everyone and welcome back to Jeffy and Chihuahua. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I make my soy wax candles. Before we get into our craft, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. It's a free way that you can help our channel grow. And if you're interested in further supporting me as an artist, you can check out my website. Everything is cat or dog themed. It's jeffyandchihuahua.com and I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description down below. Now for our project today. The first thing you're going to need to decide on is what type of jar you're going to use. And if you're just making candles for yourself, I highly suggest checking out the dollar store. They have a bunch of different options and they're all pretty much a dollar. Now if you're going to be selling these at like a craft fair, uh, you have kind of two options. You can go with mason jars, which I see a lot of people doing because they're very cheap. They're usually about 79 cents a piece. Or you can pick nicer jars and they do cost quite a bit more. These are the jars that I use. And I got these from Candle Science. And these jars look absolutely amazing. They're really beautiful. I like how they have the nice finished look. And I also was able to select lids for them in the color of black. And they had a bunch of different colors that I could choose from. And they also had different colors of um, glass that I could choose from. So you really do get to personalize it if when you go with a nicer jar. The only thing about going with a nicer jar is these jars, after the cost of shipping, with the lids included, they cost me about $3 a jar. So if you're trying to sell at a craft fair, these will cost you about $3 and a mason jar will cost you about $0.79. Cents. It's definitely something you want to keep in your mind when you're looking at the materials for selling somewhere. The next thing that you have to pick is your wicks, and I personally prefer the wooden wicks, but once again, there's a little bit of a cost difference. The cost of a wooden wick is about 30 cents, and the cost of a cotton wick is about a penny. So we're already at 3.30 in material on one jar compared to 80 cents on the other jar. But it really is up to you and the quality you want because both of them technically work, but these look nicer and these have nicer wicks and the wooden wicks make a really cool crackling noise, which is really nice if you're like in a room reading and you just have a candle going. But either wick works. So if you're just trying to go the cheaper route, the regular cotton wicks work. Um, and these I get from the Wooden Wick Company. I will leave a link in the description down below to where I get all of the materials that I'm showing you guys here today. You're going to use a hot glue gun to get your wick down into your jar. And that's another good reason to use the wooden wicks is because they just stand straight up in the jar. These ones I've already done. But you can see that um, it's not going to move around when we put the wax in it at all. And if you're going to use cotton wicks, you're going to have to use a little metal piece that sits on top to hold the wick in place while the wax is settling. So I just, I like the wood wicks better. Uh, so the next thing you're going to need is a giant jar and these are available on Amazon or on any of the candle making websites. And this we're just going to put into a second pan full of water and so we have a double boiler situation going on. The next thing you're going to need is a thermometer and you really need one of these because you have to know how hot your wax is getting. Once your wax is 180, then we're going to take it off of the stove top and add in our oils. So for my own personal recipe, I do four nine ounce jars at once and I use two and a quarter pounds of wax. What usually ends up happening is I get a Franken candle. You're going to end up adding about one ounce of fragrance oil to every one pound of wax and I personally like to have a little more than a little less. So when I melt my wax chips I usually use a little bit more than I actually need by about two ounces and the reason for that is I just like to be sure that I have enough for everything to get very full and I also like to do a Franken candle and the Franken candle is just different layers like one after the other of candles that I've done and I keep these for myself to use. They smell incredible, um, but that's just a way that I do to always make sure that I have enough wax because it's way hard to go back and melt more wax at the end if you don't have enough. Four nine ounce jars and I'm going to be using two and a quarter pound of soy wax chips. 
So that would be enough wax chips to fill all of these jars without any fragrance oil. And then I'm going to go ahead and add two and a quarter ounces of our fragrance oil. And when I'm making candles for my shop, sometimes I will put a little bit more in. I try and not add too much more though, because the higher that you go in your oil content, the more likely you are to have little oil droplets settling at the top of your candles. And we really want to go for that nice smooth finish. So if you're starting off, definitely just do one pound of soy wax to one ounce of candle scent. You'll definitely have strong candles and you're never going to have to worry about having that issue on the top with the oil coming out of the top. So now I'm going to put our wax chips on the stove top until they are exactly 180 degrees. Then I'm going to come back and we're going to put in two and a quarter of our scent oils. So our mixture just reached 180 and I pulled it off the stove top. Sometimes I'll pull it off when it's 175-ish, but the recommended temperature is 180. I'm going to give it a quick stir. I'm going to go ahead and take off our little thermometer. And next we need to add our fragrance oil. To do this, I use one ounce cups. And these are just little medicine cups that you can get on Amazon super cheap. And they're all measured to one ounce exactly. And to follow the one to one ratio, I would need to put in exactly two and a quarter of these. But I like my candles to be a little bit stronger. So I'm going to put in about two and a half of these. Smells like a mint mojito. So next I'm going to give this a really good stir and you want to make sure that the oil gets very well incorporated. Once you're certain that your oils are very well mixed in, we're just going to put our spatula to the side and we're going to begin just pouring into our glasses. You're going to want to leave a little bit of the wick without any oil covering it. That way you have something to light, but also keep in mind that soy wax, when it's hot, it expands. So as it cools, it's going to shrink a little bit and you don't want it to shrink too much and give you like a huge wick at the top. So I would say leave about a centimeter or so of the wick. So that measured out pretty perfectly and I have about two ounces left and like I said before, I know with my own personal recipe, I always end up with about two ounces of extra oil and so I have my little Franken candle here and I'm just going to top it off with another small layer so I'm not wasting anything. And now I'm just going to leave these candles to dry and I'm going to come back and show you guys how I do my labeling. We are officially back with our completely dried out candles. I let these sit for a couple days, but really they should dry overnight. Our next step on our candles is going to be to add some labels. I've already printed out some for us to use. And I just want to show you guys the brand I use. I use Avery brand and I use them because they have a lot of different types that you can choose from. They're also very fairly priced and you can choose to print them yourself or have the company print them off for you. Um, they have a really cool software that's free to use to design your labels and each of their label packages has a little number on it. That way you always make sure that the one you're designing matches the ones you purchase. That way they always print out perfectly. So I'll leave a link to their website below as well as a link to all the other supplies that we use in this. So with these stickers, I'm just going to place one on each of our jars. And you always want to go from the middle out, that way you don't get any air bubbles. Once our jar has a sticker on it, we can go ahead and add a lid. And the final thing we need to add if we're going to be selling these is these little warning labels. And you can get these on Amazon. I'll go ahead and link these as well. And these just tell people like to cut the wicks between burns and how long that it's safe to burn a candle for. 
Once we pop this on the bottom, our candle is complete for sale. I could take off this and our candle is ready for sale. So I really hope that gave you a good idea of how to make a soy wax candle as well as where to get the supplies from and also kind of a little bit what the difference is between the quality and the cost of some of the supplies. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you enjoy making candles. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and hitting subscribe. It's a free way that you can help our channel grow. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.